And here we are back to the Eric and Liz show. Hello, Liz. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Eric? How's it been? Very well, very well. And, and we have something really special this month. It's GBS Awareness Month. And so our first uh, show guest, um, well, in this wonderful month of May, I may say, Oh God, that was weird. Anyhow, will be a GBS survivor. Yes. So it is GBS CIDP Awareness Month. It's a neurological disease of the nervous system. And I actually, in 2013, I was able to get a proclamation for the GBS Foundation for the San Diego chapter saying that it's GBS CIDP Awareness Month. Wow. Mm hmm that's pretty good. Well, I would say without further ado, we're going to admit our guest, Serena. All right. And she's been patiently waiting in the waiting room. All right. So I guess she's going to, to be happy to be um, on air. And yes. of just waiting, you know, uh, for being admitted. Um, Hello, Serena. Hi. Ah, hey, we Serena. We Hi. Can't see you yet, but we can hear you. Okay, good. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Well, thank All you right. for taking out the time, you know, and the day to be with us. Well, during this uh, GBS month. Yeah. It's an right. amazing thing. Liz, this is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, are we going to be able to see you, Serena? Oh, wait. Okay. Can you? Yeah. Well, we, you, we can see. There you uh, go. There you <laughs> All right. You look lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> So let me uh, introduce our guest today is Serena Tremaine, and she is a photography's model, and she also majored in the arts, and she's also a 20-year-plus GPS survivor, and I met Serena during some of my shows at the West Gate, and she's been very, very supportive with me, and I certainly appreciate it, and she has a very uh, colorful um, background in modeling and doing all sorts of cool things. So Serena, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, <laughs> I was born uh, in San Francisco and my father was a photographer and my mother was his model. So I've been interested in photography, painting, I do stained glass, um, just anything I can do with my hands, I, I absolutely love. And so my mother and my father raised a little model. That's that's what they had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so um, also, um, to like animals. <laughs> oh, can you hear Tito? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think Tito wants to be interviewed also. He's really a ham. I don't know where he is. <laughs> All right. So um, since this is GBS and CIDP Awareness Month, if you don't mind, can we talk a little bit about GBS and give us your story? Like, how did you, you know, everyone always has a story on how they, contracted GBS, it's not contagious, it's not hereditary, but it yes. does not discriminate. It will, you know, anybody can get GBS. So could you please tell us a little bit about your journey through GBS and when you were diagnosed? It was the most amazing thing in the world. Um, it, it, of course, it, it, everybody is different. Right. Do you mind if I shut this dog up a little bit? Yeah, no, no. Sure, we, we please. Give you, we Hold give on. you some time off. <laughs> so I guess 
Chito is now being hunted down. <laughs> uh, you see, this is always what I love about live shows. You know, right. <laughs> you're there, you're in the moment. Anyway. It's okay. <laughs> Chito, that was there. It's fine. <laughs> this, this, it happened all of a sudden. It was the most amazing thing. I was at work. And mm -hmm. I worked with a whole bunch of doctors and my whole body turned red. And oh, wow. so they sent me to the pharmacy to get something. And when mm -hmm. I arrived at the pharmacy, they called 911. I mean, I was oh. completely, my eyes were red. I was just completely red. It was uh, amazing. So I called my family doctor. And the next day, uh, a man from, a doctor from the CDC, from the Center for Disease Control, met mm -hmm. me across the street from Pomona Valley Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that time, I didn't have any reflexes. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he ended up carrying me across the street to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the thing that happens with a lot of guillain barre patients mm -hmm. is they don't believe it. It's so, right. you know, everything is so crazy. The, the things that happen to you are so crazy. Mm -hmm. And so right. I, I stayed at the hospital for a few hours with the with the center for disease control and they were trying to figure out what to do mm -hmm. the, the diagnosis at that time or probably still is for guillain barre was a lp was a lumbar puncture a spinal a spinal tap hey, exactly and isn't that amazing they diagnosed something from a spinal tap oh yeah that's why they want to be so sure you know that they're on point because they don't want to have to give you that if they don't have to, but you know. The, um, like I said, by the time, by the time the center for disease control doctor carried me across the street to the hospital, I lost everything. It was, mm. it was absolutely amazing. And of course they didn't know what it was. Right. And recently, I think we talked about this. I didn't mm -hmm. know Guillain Bray was autoimmune. Right, it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have lupus, and I, I'm the autoimmune queen. I have the jackpot. I have every autoimmune thing you can think of. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, my rheumatologist was really, really interested in this with, with the CDC people, but how, mm -hmm. how did this happen? And right. I wasn't the only one. One of my coworkers also, they never really pinned it down to Guillain-Barre, but she had all the symptoms. She couldn't feel her feet and mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. So um, that's how it went. And a couple of days in the hospital, uh, well, actually I spent six months in the hospital, but a couple of days to begin with before mm -hmm. the final tap. Oh, yeah, when they did the spinal tap, they discovered you know, what the problem was. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was really interesting about being in the hospital, not being able to move, was they had to point at a little blackboard. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Pointed and, and, and spelled things out for the nurses and stuff. Mm -hmm. it, that, it, that was really cool. I mean, there was a way to communicate, even though we really couldn't communicate. Right. And all you wanted to do was cry, right? Exactly. So, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> So do I understand this right? You weren't able to speak? No. No. Uh, I know that's that the, all, there's all kinds of unusual things with Keon Bray mm -hmm. that different people have. And mm -hmm. I, I think I had all of them. Because probably because I had lupus. Well, not probably. That was the, mm -hmm. you know, the diagnosis. You have the autoimmune trait. So you're going to have fun with this. Right, because you do have to have all types of therapy. You have to have a speech therapy, physical therapy, you know, once you're strong enough to do that. And yeah. so how long were you, how long was it before you started to do some physical therapy? It wasn't that long. Uh, I met Greg, a physical therapist that used to carry me around the room. Okay. So it was maybe, maybe six months. Okay. And okay. that a physical therapy in itself is a whole other story because you meet all these people that are paralyzed and handicapped mm -hmm. and you all of a sudden you become a part of their lives. Right. You know, during physical therapy, people have seizures in your lap and it's right. just the most 
amazing lesson on life, I think. I think mm -hmm. most people with Guillain-Barre say that too. Right, exactly. So did was there, Serena, during that time, did you get any type of treatment for GBS? Did they have anything for you? Gamma globulin transfer. Okay. Yeah, IVIG. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. at that time when Serena got um, GBS, they yeah. had just started to get a treatment for it. When I had it, there was nothing. I just had to write it out. I didn't have sure. any any kind of medication that wasn't even, it was probably in the works, but you know, if you were able to get that, that was awesome because it really does help. That, it was a wonderful thing, but you at the time, um, they they didn't realize a, a lot of things about Guillain-Barre, I think that they do, that they do now. Um, right. We, you know, we visit people in the hospital and try to, you know, um, try to cheer them up and tell them mm -hmm. that it's going to be okay. But right, I don't know if there if there are any big breakthroughs or if there's anything different that they can do now to help. Right, it's just you know we all have to continue to be a big community and inspiring and motivating each other because there's really not a lot one can do about GBS. You know, they do have the treatments, IVIG treatment and the um, plasma pharesis. Right. And other than that, with the physical therapy, but it is a, a time game, you know, time is of the essence and you do have to have uh, lots of, um, as much of physical therapy as your body can handle. Sometimes you really do have to be careful with the physical therapy because your body, you know, your body is really tired in itself, all your joints and everything. So you, you know, your um, physical therapy has to be uh, monitored. And they even consider, you know, you brushing your teeth and yeah. certain things. All of that is physical therapy. Activity, yeah. Because just the things that we take for granted are some of the things that a GBS and CIDP patient is so very grateful for. Yes. You know, these are small things. Isn't yeah, it? So. It's absolutely amazing mm -hmm. the way you can wake up more one morning mm -hmm. and by noon or that evening, you can't move. Right. Exactly. It literally works, you know, pretty much that fast. And it takes you going to the emergency room for you to be diagnosed in the, you know, in the proper way. It's, it's kind of hard to do emergency detect. room. Yeah, so many people with Guillain Bre went to the emergency room, and they either sent them to a psychiatrist or you know told them to go home. Uh, mm -hmm. Veronica, a friend of mine, entered the hospital three or four times with Guillain Bre, and they sent her home. Mm -hmm. I, I I remember the emergency room. I remember the nurses. I remember the CDC sent a couple of doctors from out of state to see me. And by that time, I figured out that I was really in trouble. That something was was really, really wrong. And physical therapy, I, I still do physical therapy. I, st I don't have any reflexes, so I have to continue to learn mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how big is the CBS population here in the United States? Uh, oh, as far as GBS? patients? Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I'm sure Liz does, but um, yeah, it's two in one hundred thousand. Okay. Now, at Liz, a while back, it was like one in a million, wasn't it? Pretty like much. It was. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Right. It's the numbers are going up. Yeah. They are two in a million. Uh -huh. Due to a lot of different things, I you know oh, maybe I don't want to get into a lot of. Yeah. Pardon me, Eric. I'm sorry. No, no. So sorry, sorry. I, I was just doing the math again and mm -hmm. so yeah um but they've come a long ways you know what i mean they you know the emergency room doctors are really on it they i mean they people are getting diagnosed like that now because they're learning the symptoms because it does mimic a stroke they kept yeah. thinking i had a stroke i got sent home like five or six times yeah, you know, I was hyperventilating. That's what they yeah. told me. Go blow in a paper bag. <laughs> uh, this is real. Yeah, you know. And um, finally, once I just, you know, could not walk anymore, then they started to look at different things. You know, that's when they said, "Okay, we're going to do a spinal." 
Yeah. You know, but it's something that you have to diagnose right away. That's, that's the issue right there. It needs to be diagnosed right away. And then there's all the diagnosis, MS, polio. Right. Um, everything that you can think of that doesn't mm -hmm. apply to it all. And, and then there's the people. The, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, what's wrong with you? Why can't you walk? What, what have you done to yourself? I don't know if I'm the only one that experienced that, but it, that was really, really something. And then to go mm -hmm. to therapy and experience the, the real, the handicapped people and stuff. It was like a mm -hmm. whole new world just opened up here of empathy. And, and right. understanding for me mm -hmm. personally. Right, exactly. Um, you know, you had to run the gamut, the, the wheelchair, the walker, the, the leg braces, uh, braces yeah. all of that. Yeah, it's very, very real. Yeah, and you do have to have a lot of patience because your body will heal itself. You know, the nerves, they will heal, but it does take some time. Yeah. So. I, I don't know if I told you this, but um, recently I had a Guillain-Barre related foot problem. And, and it's one of those things, is it Guillain-Barre, once again, is it rheumatoid arthritis, you have lupus, but the, the um, foot surgeon decided that the very strong possibility that this was Guillain-Barre related. Uh, Did he call I, it foot drop? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people have um, problems with their feet. I even know of a, a young lady that had foot surgery. I had never seen that. I used to go and pay her a visit and she actually, um, she had foot surgery. I don't know. Yeah. It, it turns your feet a certain way for certain people. Everybody has a different uh, yeah. story. Definitely. My, it affects people differently. I know. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Something... I don't know, a lot of times I think that this was just an absolute horrible nightmare to happen. But yes. on the other hand, like I've said before, working with the, the uh, handicapped people and I wasn't working with them, I was there for physical therapy, but that's what it felt like. It felt like a family. Mm -hmm. And if there mm -hmm. was anybody with, with Guillain Bray, my neurologist, he still to this day will call me and say, hey, go see somebody in the hospital. Right, right, exactly. So I totally understand. And a lot of um, GBS survivors and CIDP survivors, we definitely, we all have something in common. It's a, it's a certain kind of bond that we all have because we know what each other, you know, pretty much has yeah. been through. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I, I've tripped down a few runways since Guillain Bray and, felt like a complete <laughs> idiot and had my, my model sister stand up for me to other people. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's still a part of me. Right, of course, of yeah. course, it, yes, absolutely. It so is that's... something you will never forget. And so no that's... matter where you are, I was on, on a, um, a boat sightseeing trip in, in Alaska and uh, these, I met these this older couple whose grandson had Guillain Barre, and they noticed my AFOs. They recognized my braces, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I spent the whole trip talking to them about it and trying to to make them feel better because it was their grandson. When it's the children, it's it's mm -hmm. a whole different thing. So just to to just veer for a moment in another direction before we come back is, so yeah, a photographer's model. So when I heard that, I was like, I have to ask that question that, so you have a model. So obviously there are different type of models who watch Zoolander, no, there are even hand models, but a photographer's model. Mm -hmm. A photographer's model, it's more of an old term because my father was a photographer, my mother was his model. And it, I love photographers. I love the work that they do. I love the whole artist, artistic thing. And that's more as opposed to um, a technical model. Like you said, there's, there's all different kinds of models. I pose for photographers. I do um, their, their print work for them. Um, 
I do a lot of things like that. I love being in front of the camera. I love having my picture taken. So oh, yeah. well, yeah. would you mind that we maybe share a couple of those pictures with our viewers and you comment on them? Of course. Okay. And, and by the way, Serena does not look her age. Oh, Don't yeah. let her fool you because she is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. So talk about this photo. Oh, isn't that cute? This is my stained glass work that I that I did in the background, by the way. Um, oh. This is wonderful photographer John Hawkins. And this was a, uh, a shoot that we did at my house after another shoot. Notice the dirty feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So I, I'm just sitting on a table and... Um, what they call this is POV, point of view. And it's what the photographer, it's what John Hawkins saw of me through the camera. And that, that's who you see there. That's what being a photographer's model is too, understanding what they mm -hmm. need, what you, what you need to give. Um, but that, that's me and my stained glass in the background. That I that's made. beautiful. Do you sell that? I did for a long time. The mm -hmm. story about learning stained glass while you can't move your hands is hysterical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did, I used to tape my fingers together so I could cut. Wow. <laughs> this picture was taken by uh, Gary Keith, my mentor and photographer for many years. And he wrote a big story about it. This is all about no's, no, no false eyelashes, no this, no that, no Photoshop. And mm -hmm. he took this completely, I had makeup on, but not, you know, just make topical makeup. Mm -hmm. um, and he took this beautiful picture of me a few years ago, uh, I, just before my 70th birthday. Wow, Serena. <laughs> Just before. Yeah. <laughs> that was three years ago, by the way. This, another John Hawkins, fabulous picture. This is recent. Just, isn't that beautiful? It's it just, is. It is. It's very beautiful. Picture. That's what <laughs> photography is all about. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an emotion that you work, collaborate with a photographer together mm -hmm. to, to do. Anybody can do it. It just, it's concentration and training i think wow i love that that's oh. me and alexis at your um <laughs> that's at uh, yeah your pop-up right the pop-up boutique yeah i think that was the governor's suite it was it was, <laughs> that was beautiful. yeah it was really cool and mm -hmm. wasn't that around our birthdays it was in august mm-hmm mm -hmm. That's Alexis Slater, another model, my, uh, my best friend and I. All right. Oh, this is cute, isn't it? I love that. <laughs> you know, for so many years, they couldn't get me, before Guillaume Bray, they couldn't get me to do a serious look on my face. Mm -hmm. I was just, as soon as the camera hit me, I'd be smiling. And uh, John Hawkins, once again, pulled this serious look out of me. It, it, it's it's once again, it's me collaborating with a photographer to get something exceptional. That's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Ah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, a 70 year old right there. <laughs> ah. Wow. I want to look like that when I grow up. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, well, Serena. But that's also, um, I would say you can, you can see in the picture that you're feeling very comfortable. Yeah. You know, with your body, with your age, um, it's sh it's sure that not every seventy year old, you know, it's going to take those pictures. But on the other hand, um, just recently, I think Susan Summers. Uh, did a whole new series of pictures and you know this if you feel comfortable I think that's the most important thing mm -hmm. oh, yeah, playboy call me um, I don't move my legs very well they don't move they move together and I walk really pretty good except mm -hmm. stepping on curbs and stuff but mm -hmm. some of the poses are 
very difficult, like to move things at, together at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was one of the, the, the problems that I had with modeling. I was never afraid that Guillain-Barre was going to interfere with my life in any way. But there's little things right. constantly, right? That pop exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. So what they tell you, Serena, is that 10% of something won't come back. There'll be a 10% of something that you will always pretty much deal with for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll never forget one time I was, um, I was in the elevator with my, with a doctor here in San Diego. And he told me, he said, um, how have you been? I said, I've been doing okay. And he, and there was another doctor on this side. He said, smile. And I went, uh, I, yeah. I couldn't do it. He <laughs> said, yep. He said, see, I told you. In other words, like, I knew that that wasn't going to come back. Because when, mm -hmm. when I saw him, like, a couple years before, it was still the same. So that was my, pretty much my 10%. But for somebody to actually, you know, bring attention to that, that's pretty negative. You know, I, I really didn't, mm -hmm. I, I didn't like that. But, you know. You yeah. know, there was a lot of that, Liz, a lot yeah. of, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I could cry thinking about it. A lot, a lot of negative, a lot like walking around a store and somebody looks at your face and then they look down at the, right? The leg braces right. and they turn away and, and a lot of questions. What did you do to yourself? You know, um, right. Yeah, like it's your fault. <laughs> right. I know. I heard a lot of that. You know, yeah. it's fascinating. You know, I, I think, you know, when I asked Liz, um, you know, to, to be on a show with me where she is on camera, you know, for 40, 50, 60 minutes um, in a live environment, I, I, I remember you, you were a little hesitant. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, hey, there, there is no reason. There's really no reason. Now we are, what, nearly a year in right, the right. and and it's just great, you know, when when you see the comments and how it's perceived. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it it's good that people see you are curious and also then understand. Right, exactly. And, and I think that's why it's so important that we have people for this GBS Awareness Month, you know, on the show, mm -hmm. or on the next show, which can tell their story. And um, I don't want to say normalize it because, mm -hmm. because I think that that it will never be normal for you. Right. But just having that awareness that mm -hmm. there is this, you know, sickness out there mm -hmm. that that. Well, I don't know to what point it's even explainable. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, it, it just hits you. And, right. It does. And there's nothing you can do about it. And when you think that you have to have a spinal tab, which in itself is a very dangerous procedure. Right. It is. <laughs> just to, to actually be able... Um, you know, to find out what you have. I'm sure mm -hmm. yeah. doctors are just hesitant. Right. You know, and say, hey, before I put that needle into your bag, you know, let's let's mm -hmm. maybe explore different things. But then also like having a stroke now, time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. You have to find out very soon what it is so you can start curing it. Start right? treating it. That's right, Eric. That's right. Liz, did, did they ever drop you in the hospital? No, I, you know what? <laughs> I hate to say this, but uh, it's actually in my book. I fell, I fell at least three times. You know, in my mind, I could walk. I know. I was trying to throw something in the trash. <laughs> and it didn't move. And I, and, and I just realized like, you know what, girl, you cannot walk. My legs slid up under the uh, under the bed, and I just I collapsed. Yeah, so I did it to myself. They didn't. They didn't. They took very good care of me. Long Beach Memorial Hospital. 
uh, in Long Beach, yeah. But I, I fell a couple of times not realizing that, you know what, you really cannot walk. I just couldn't fathom that. I know. It, it's almost impossible. It's it, it like, when am I going to wake up and everything's going to be okay? And it never, right. I mean, right. I, I'm sure a lot of us have the airflexia and, and, the, and the, the things that, that stay with you. And I still have trouble getting up fast. Right, right, exactly. Uh, There's a lot of people that still, I know a lot of people that, that are still uh, with crutches and canes, you know, that have had mm -hmm. it longer than I have. And those are just some of the things, you know, that's why I'm so very grateful. I really am. I'm so very grateful because yeah. it could have been so much worse, you know, the long, Listen, for the long term. Were you terrified? Yeah, I was a little afraid. I was. I was only 22 years old. Yeah, yeah. I was afraid. Yeah. You know, and then once I figured out, you know, you're going to be like this. And because there's there wasn't anyone to say, oh, you know, I had that before and you're going to be just fine. You know, it, I went years before I knew anybody that had it. So, yeah. um, you know, it was, it was very trying. And now now I realize that two or three years after I had GBS, I was actually still in a recovery state. I didn't realize that until pretty much now you know i'm that, still that in again. recovery mm -hmm. that's how i look i'm still in recovery and and recognize it and and do what you do you know mm -hmm. to a, in a in a small way talk mm -hmm. to people and try to get you know encourage them but i i, I know there's all kinds of things that can happen to you but this the guillain bray thing was just it was fascinating it's, it's just, it's, it, well, <laughs> yeah, it was something. What's going to happen today? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Serena, I, I do have to say I admire you to be able to, to look at it in, in that way that uh, you described it as fascinating. You know, it's nearly like someone from the outside actually looking in to your own situation. Um, how, how did your family and your environment take it? Um, they modified everything. There was a ramp to get into the house type of thing. And wow. Uh, th yeah, things were all modified. Um, uh, Liz, I have a beautiful, almost 50 year old daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, yeah. And she was, it, everybody was in complete shock because mm -hmm. people don't, people can be cruel. Yeah. Yes, That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and with something that is so rare as Guillain Bray and and so evasive and so shocking to people, mm -hmm. you know, what's wrong with you? Why can't you get up? I don't. Right. I, how many times did you hear that? Or did you just come back from the dentist? Oh or, yeah, no. what's wrong with your face? Guess, yeah, <laughs> but I, I've had to educate, and I, I never. Um, it doesn't oh, bother me. I, I've had to educate a few people. Um, photographers, you know, I love photographers, but a couple, you know, you kind of messed that picture up. You weren't smiling. And um, I just kind of pull them to the side and just tell them my story. And then like, I don't really want to make you feel bad or anything like that, but I'm just going to educate you on, you know, why I don't have that full smile. I think they okay. deserve to know sometimes, you know, because I, I, sometimes I wouldn't want to take pictures. You know, when it comes down to certain things, you over there, you know, come on, smile. Give me that little, uh -huh. I'm like, oh God. Okay. I mean, that, that has happened so many times, but you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. You, you really don't know someone's story. So just, you yeah. know, be kind, you know? Yeah. You really don't know. Yeah. Nobody wants to trip yeah. on getting up the curb and not being able to hold a coffee cup because it's too heavy. Right. And, right. You know, just uh, to this day, I use plastic cups because coffee mm -hmm. cups were too heavy for a long mm -hmm. time. When did you start feeling that you were going to be OK? Um, when a friend of mine called me, I was still in the hospital. Um, they just told me to reflect and, you know, do a lot of soul searching and just, you know, figure out some things while you're just laying there. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, then I really knew that I was going to be okay. I was good. 
I'm still okay. doing that. I mean, it changed my whole life. You yeah. Know? yeah. All the things that I thought I was going to do at that time that I had plans, it changed my everything, literally. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it keeps on giving too. <laughs> yeah. But I, like I said, I'm still so very grateful, you know? Um, yes. So very grateful. Yes. I am too. The doctors, the physical therapists, the, the family, the friends that, that help. The, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it, yeah, it was amazing. But it's still amazing to me. Yeah, it's, you do need a big support team. Like Eric was saying, like, you know, what kind of support did you have? You do need a lot of understanding people around you. And I, you know, my family is very, very understanding and very, very helpful. Mm-hmm. It takes that. It takes everything. And then and then on the other side of it, on the negative side, are the people that look at you like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I think about it quite a bit, and I don't think mm-hmm. about it as being scared anymore. I mean, after all these years, I'm, I'm probably still afraid of it. I met mm-hmm. at, at a Gyan Brave meeting, I met an airline pilot that had it twice. Oh, wow. There's their cases like that. Mm-hmm. 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 And that is, I, I don't mean to sound stupid, but is that what CIPD means? The chronic inflammatory polyneuropathy? That's, that's more like if you, if you have CIDP, you're going to pretty much have it. I, I don't like to say for the rest of your life, but if you have, you, if it starts out with GBS and you see that you're not getting better, there's a possibility that it's going to be um, CIDP. And then you will have to have the, the immunoglobin. You will have to have treatments every eight weeks or unless you go into um, remission, you can go into remission with CIDP a lot of people do and then it could possibly come back you know yeah Yeah. absolutely but it's 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 a you know it's kind of rough but there's a lot of people that manage it you know it's you have to and over yeah my doctor my doctor said I thought you were gonna stick stick a gun in your head you're so active you know and it wasn't anything like that I didn't even think about that I just thought whoo how are we going to get through this? Right. And you do, you do, you know, you, you manage, you do. Yes, you do. Absolutely. So, so Serena, I'm, I'm so happy we were able to, to share your story because I think that that's so important. You know, we, we're having, you know, really survivor stories, you know, from, from all different types sites and, great stories um Mm -hmm. but gbs is so little known people know so little about that there Mm -hmm. has to be that awareness i think even for you know the doctors out there that might not consider even thinking about the diagnosis like that because maybe some doctors never in their whole career come across it right you know, and then they visit you in the hospital, doctors from out of state, and that's true. <laughs> well, you said the CDC came to you, and I mean that's pretty amazing. Yeah, they that is. me to the hospital, <laughs> and then there's the doctors that that tell the nurses when you go in for a doctor's visit, get her reflexes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they used the, to get mine. The, I said, oh no, she's. Once. Yeah. Of course, we don't have any. You know. Right. <laughs> They used to tell me, oh, she's getting worse. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, don't, <laughs> you know, in my mind, I'm getting better. You can say whatever you want, but yeah. you have to have a positive attitude. You, you know, you, you're trying to heal. <laughs> I'm so yeah. happy I met you, Liz. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy I met you. <laughs> you you, you are really something and you've done wonderful things for Gian Bure and let, letting people know that this, this is a real thing and you are a real star and a, a gifted wonderful designer and thank that, you that says so much to people that have Guillain Bre or CIPD mm-hmm. that there's somebody like you around thank you I appreciate that thank you 
right. Well, this I'm going to leave it to you to close the show. This is literally your show today. <laughs> thank you. All right. <laughs> so Serena, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your, your beautiful story. And you have had an, uh, a happy ending and you're still, you know, vibrant and doing certain things. And we wish you all the best. And thank you again for coming on and sharing your story. Thank you. Appreciate it. Would you, do you have anything you would like to <laughs> leave with our guest? Any, um, anything motivational, something you want to tell another GBS patient who is um, going to hear this and do uh, this? Yes. Call me. I know some people that are absolutely fabulous with helping you get better. Um, right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And like okay. you said before, it's a bond. Right. It is. It is. And you can find Serena. She's on Facebook. SerenaTremaine.com. I mean, yeah, on Facebook. Yeah. Right? I have the Bikini Network gave me my own website. I have Sexy Serena. Chance of a lifetime. Yeah. Yes. I, love <laughs> I love it. All right. We'll put all your information below so people can contact you. Thank you. You know, life is not over. Not, no. you know, hey. No, it's still not. do things. That's right. So we wish you all the best, Serena. Thank you. Okay. Take care. You too. Love you. Love you too.